This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Slim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy Mae D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, Pure Lina Water Supply Corporation, Phoenix Petroleum Fuels Philippines Incorporated by Dennis A. Uy, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardin, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Quailans Food House, Selvina de Toy and Family, Doctora Amelia Deason and Family, Gas and Sophie Sulwaga, Mrs. Ampi Icasas and Family, and Fe Takando. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of the following. Sponsoring Group, Deep Ed Talomo District Dash A. Principals and teachers heeded by the Public Schools District Supervisor, Dione M. Perolino. Albert and Abilia Capinda and Family Collaborators Leandro's Specialties House of Lord Anthony Natis Lichon Cecil's Snack Inn Paternos Elvi Gutierrez Henry Evangelista Dasha University of Mindanao Ramline Resources Incorporated Davao Diamond Industrial Supply Davao Great Wall Incorporated, Royal Bonds Corporation, Adolfo and Malu Atu, Josri D. Bacolo Jr. Diversified, Birthday, Marlon Linsag and Louis J. Basol, Thanksgiving, Alan G. Rivera Principal 3, Lori Lee T. Baladad Principal 3, Marlon Paul G. Sampayan, Principal 2 Viola S. Esperagoza, Principal 3 Potenciano M. Gore, Principal 4 Maria Ligaya R. Romero, Principal 3 Dr. Maria H. Latiada, Principal 4 Hyacinth F. Flores, Principal 2 SDS Rinaldo Solitario Marilyn Soria Teresita Villa Abrelie Gigi Coronel and Family Mary Gineth Ranario Carlito S. Camilotes Elmer Patak Nelia Ann Sabilino Dr. Jacqueline Delgado Albert and Avelina Capinda and Family Catalina Bacolod Grace Good Health Domingo Socaire Simporiano Ranis Albert and Avelina Capinda Vivina Pisalbon Catalina Bacolod Rinaldo and Ginami Solitario and Family Dione and Flor Perolino Recovery and Healing Lita Montalban Repose of the Souls Emerita Gina Josue Sr. Marcos, Christine, Dorotea, Roberta, Gavino, Romias, Rosella, Seriaco, Linda, Aida, Hineroso, German Chu, Ang Angela, 
Nicomedes, Romeo, Bienvenido, Marquesa, Epifanio Jr., Josefino, Nelson, Rinerio Sr., Condrada, Lucas, Flordereca, Jose, Isidorico, Adela, Casiana, Carlos, Remedios, Pacifica, Angelica, Esther, Jesus, May Christine, Leticia, Philip. All the victims of war, natural and man-made calamities, and all the souls in purgatory. All the deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Communication Ministry of Davao. There comes a time in our life when we have to make important choices. Choices that may have repercussions in our state of life, our profession, work at hand, plans and goals. But there are choices that will lead both well-being and grief. The most fundamental choice concerns our relationship with Jesus Christ. We are constantly challenged to choose between faithfulness to His teachings and the allurements of the rationalistic, hedonistic, and materialistic world in which we are immersed. This is a choice that demands wisdom, which leads us to stand by Jesus, and generosity, which enables us to pay the price for choosing to follow Jesus. The liturgy of today is a clear and distinct call for us to make the choices that matter. May the readings and the Eucharist, which we celebrate and receive, lead us to make our own Peter's humble life enabling choice. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Let us keep this in mind as we are about to start the Eucharistic celebration and thank the Lord for the grace to be able to partake in God's banquet of love. Our Mass Presider is Rev. Father Neil Badilio OFM, Order of Friar Maida. We are gathered in faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our celebration, my dear sisters and brothers, most especially our attendees online. We are offering to God all our intentions, most especially our thanksgiving for the many graces that we receive from Him. And today on the 21st Sunday in the Ordinary Time, let us again open our hearts. Let us acknowledge that God is a merciful and compassionate God. Let us open our hearts to accept that all of us are sinners. And so now we ask for His mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Christ. 
on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Chikim, summoning the elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people, If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us all along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be the holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Is it, it is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would but betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to focus my homily today about 
the very controversial letter of Paul to the Ephesians, and that is what we heard in our second reading today. Paul advised the wives to, to, to be subordinate to their husbands. According to the many feminist theologians, this is actually in favor of juvenism. This is in favor of patriarchal society wherein the man is above the women and that men are superior to women. So if we are going, if we, if before we, we throw this letter into the garbage bin, there are many things that we can learn from this because we believe that the letter of Paul is also a good news then there is an important teachings that are actually given to us that we need to take into our heart. First is the word hypostaso in Greek is not actually literally means to be subordinate, but actually to surrender and to submit. So the women or the wives in particular should submit to their Husband. So this is submission. When it is submission, it is an action word, not the noun. To be so subordinate in itself is not favorable because this is in favor to the teachings that women are inferior to men. No, the teaching of Paul is that we must, I mean, the, the, the wives must submit to their, to their husband. And the husbands and the wives, are, they are going to submit to one another. It is not only the wives who will submit to their husband, but this is also a reciprocal command. The husbands must also submit to their wives. And the meaning of submission here is actually to give love, to serve. So therefore, we, the, the, the husband, the couple, are actually invited to serve one another. There are three kinds of relationship between husband and wife. The first one is, of course, those who are living happily because they are serving one another. They are submitting to one another. The feelings are actually mutual. But there is an, another kind of relationship that it is only the husband who is serving the wife. So this kind of relationship is not a happy relationship. And the another one is that it is the wife who is serving the husband. So if you have mga single dito na gustong magiging masaya kaya sila mag-asawa, that is not the real purpose of getting married. The real purpose of being a married person is to serve and to give love and happiness to someone. And you are going to look for a person that with the same purpose of entering into a married life. Marriage is invented by God. This is not an invention by human beings from the very beginning. God created man not to be alone, but to have a wife. And therefore, God invented husband and wife. It is God who created marriage. It is not human beings. But in our society today, they want to reinvent marriage, which is not according to the plan of God. They want divorce, which is actually the invention of human beings. Invention in married life has no place because originally God invented the marriage of a man and a woman to become one as husband and wife. And the second one is that we submit, the wife submit to the husband because he is like Christ. He is following the mission of Christ and that is to love the church. And therefore, you are submitting to the mission of your husband. Not you are submitting to a husband that is not very much like Christ. Only a husband 
who manifest a character and attributes of that of Christ that the wife should submit. You are not going to submit to a husband that is abusive. You are not going to submit to your husband who always commit adultery. And all of these characters and attributes are actually very unchrist like But you have a mission to change that person. Because we believe that the foundation of our society, the success of our society, is not about good government leaders. It's not about the leaders of the church. The success and the existence and survivals of the society, the key of that is the family, most especially the husband and the wife. That's why your vocation as husband and wife and mother and father are very, very important. It is already in the plan of God. In Genesis, you have that. And of course, in Revelation, wherein Christ is married perfectly in our church. Marriage is the sacrament of God. It means that marriage is a concrete manifestation of God's grace, God's love, and compassion to humanity. That's why husbands and wives submit to one another, serve one another, because that is your mission. You are a manifestation, the sacramental sign and witnesses of God's love to his church and the church love for Christ. Amen. Let us renew our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, the Lord, and I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father. For me, all things for me, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism. For the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The mystery of the Eucharist challenges our inclination to accept only what we understand. Aware of our weakness, we implore, Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. Let the church under the leadership of Pope Francis, may always remain faithful to her covenant with the Lord. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That husbands and wives, through a life of faithful love, may witness the love that binds Christ and the Church. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That those who do not believe in the sacramental presence of Christ in the Eucharist may put aside their realistic views and accept with humility the teaching of Christ. 
let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That those who feel rejected, the oppressed, the sick, and the dying, may they experience in sacramental communion the source of their hope and the root of their everlasting life. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That all of us may remain faithful to Jesus, even when many reject his teachings and leave the church. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That all political leaders may they always be at the service of their people, working for integral human development and for the common good especially caring for the poor and those who have lost their jobs. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. That our faithful departed and all souls in purgatory may now share the joy of the saints in God's kingdom. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. In silence, let us offer our own personal intentions. Let us pray. Faithful God, keep us faithful to you. Lord of all truth and all consolation, even if everybody else should abandon you on account of your demands, grant us the grace never to stop adoring, loving and serving you. Who live and care forever and ever. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we had been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim.
Holy, O Lord, upon to all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Thank you. 
every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And be your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Of spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the sick. Lord and Father, God without end and almighty, to your grace you give us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy touch your sick people. Deliver them from their sicknesses and restore their good health so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads for the final blessing. May the blessing of God be upon you. The blessing of the Father and the Son. And may the Spirit of God, the Spirit of peace, be with you. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. We go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Special thanks to our Mass Presider, Rev. Father Neil Badilio, OFM. Lectors, First Reading, Dr. Maria Hingpit Latiada. Responsorial Psalm, Jane Rose P. Lumasag. Second Reading, Catherine Barena. Prayer of the Faithful, Agnes Godinez. Choir, Canticles of Praise Choir. Carmelite Monastery, Lanang, Davao City Organist, John Suplemento <music>